In the next few videos, we're going to cover forces. To start, this video is going to define what forces are, talk about how we represent forces in free body diagrams, and then finally discuss Newton's first law. So to begin, forces can be defined as any interaction that produces acceleration when unopposed. Typically, we like to think of forces as a push or a pull, right? If you push on a box, you can get the box to start moving. You can change its velocity. However, it's important to understand that forces don't have to involve direct contact. For instance, if you have a box on top of an inclined plane, that box can slide down the inclined plane by itself without someone physically pushing or pulling the box down the inclined plane. Right? In that situation, you have a non-contact force, gravity, which is allowing the box to slide down the inclined plane. Okay. So now that we know what forces are, let's talk about free body diagrams. So when you look at many objects around you, they're all experiencing different forces. However, just looking at the objects by themselves, there's no visible way for you to determine what forces are acting in the objects. So to better understand the physics of forces, we draw diagrams to better understand what's going on. So for example, here we have a situation where a person pushes a box. So if you look at the situation, sure, in real life, you can look, you can see a person pushing a box, but you don't see any forces visibly acting on the box. But we know there are multiple forces in play here. For instance, as the person pushes a box, they are applying their force on the box. We can call this the applied force. We also know there's other forces acting on the box. There's the force of gravity, which we often think of as the weight of the box. And there's also the normal force, which is perpendicular to the surface. And if the box is on a surface that is not frictionless, then the box also experiences a force of friction. And again, it's not like when you push a box, all of these arrows representing the vectors for these forces, it's not like these arrows just start appearing out of the box. All right, we certainly don't see that. So again, this is just a diagram, so we can better understand what's going on. And once you can draw out the forces, then you can start talking about the net force. So the net force is just adding up all the forces together to figure out what is the direction of the net force that the object experiences if there is a net force. And what we often do with these free body diagrams is we'll consider the net force in different directions so that we can consider, for instance, uh, the vertical motion of an object, which is determined by the net force in the vertical direction, or motion in the horizontal direction, which would be based on the net force of the horizontal forces acting on the object. All right, we'll certainly do more practice with free body diagrams, but that's a general introduction to what they are. So now, let's talk about Newton's first law, which is often also called the law of inertia. Now, inertia by itself is a new term, so we we'll want to find what this is. You can think of inertia as the resistance to change in velocity. And where this comes from is the general statement for the law of inertia, that if no forces are acting on the object, or the net force is zero, then an object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will continue in motion with constant velocity. All right, so again, the idea is that if you're not doing anything to the box, then it's just going to continue whatever its motion it had to begin with. So one thing we can consider with inertia is how much inertia an object has. How much resistance does it have to change in velocity? And this is essentially considering the question, what makes one object hard to push? And what makes another object easy to push? And you might have figured that out that for translational motion, inertia can be quantified as the mass of an object. All right, the more mass an object has, the harder it is to change its velocity. 
Okay. So another way we can represent Newton's first law is with an equation, which is this one right here. Net force equals zero. If the net force equals zero, then the object isn't experiencing any acceleration. So again, if that's the case, then an object at rest will stay at rest. It has no velocity and will maintain no velocity. And an object in motion will keep moving with constant velocity. And remember, velocity is a vector, so that means the object will keep moving in the same direction and with the same magnitude of speed. All right. So we can consider one situation here where you have a mass and it's just sitting on a surface. So in this situation, there's nobody pushing on the box. So the only forces acting in the box are going to be the gravity and the normal force. And in this situation, the net force is going to equal zero. And our object is not going to have any velocity. So our object is at rest. So in this situation, based on Newton's first law, we know that this object is going to keep sitting here with a velocity of zero. It's going to stay at rest. Now, this is not particularly exciting, but there are many applications of Newton's first law, and we're going to see in subsequent videos how this concept is going to be very helpful for solving a variety of physics problems. Another thing that I want to talk real quick about Newton's first law is that this second situation of an object in motion will stay in motion with constant velocity is often tough to see on the Earth. Right? Even if you're on surfaces that have very, very low friction, like ice, it can be hard uh, to see this because it's technically not applicable. For instance, if you're on an ice rink and someone hits a hockey puck and the hockey puck is sliding quickly across the ice. It's true that ice is a very smooth and slippery surface. However, there's still a bit of friction there. So in that situation, the hockey puck is not going to move with constant velocity because the net force is not zero. It is experiencing friction. So a better example of where Newton's first law applies and where an object in motion will continue in motion with constant velocity would be looking at objects in space. So in space, objects essentially aren't experiencing any forces. So if you take an object and you push it in one direction, whatever velocity it has, it's going to maintain that velocity and just keep moving in the same direction and with the same magnitude of speed.